This is the Mauser M18. This was announced in the 2018 SHOT Show, but nobody's really been talking about it because it hasn't been on shelves. Then about six months ago, you guys have been absolutely slamming the comments asking for the M8, M18 review. They are definitely on shelves. This is DOS Original. This is the Mauser M18. Now, Mauser is a German company. They make much more expensive guns, and so this is unique for them to be playing in this very cheap price point, kind of with the Bagara B14 Hunter and the Ruger American Go Wild. So to see a Mauser in this price point, kind of interesting. Whoa, this bolt <laughs> looks like it's been through two world wars already. It, the finish on it is just not good at all. It already looks really scuffed up. That's not a promising sign as the first thing out of the box. It's using a three lug bolt. It has also a three position safety. Plastic trigger guard, plastic everything. But oh yeah, look back here. Yes, sir. Looks like we got some storage back here. Let me get some snacks. Yeah, I'm saying that is enough space for, let's see here. Yeah, sure enough. Okay, so that, yeah. So I haven't measured the capacity of what you could fit in the butt stock, but I would say it's about 12 smoky nuts and one of those chocolate eyeballs from my kid's Halloween candy. That's nice to have around. Stock lines are pretty traditional throughout, but it does have a nice grip. The grip is a little bit more vertical than what we would traditionally see. All right, so we're gonna scope this thing up. For the scope, we're gonna use this ZeroTech 3 to 18 by 50 that they sent out to me. This is my first time trying a ZeroTech scope, but I will say I love the locking turret, thank you. And it's extremely tactile, very, I really like the turret design, I'm big on that. First five shots with the Mauser M18, we're gonna try it, we have five shots to go to 500 yards. So that means we gotta zero the gun and shoot a 500 yard target within five, the first five shots down the barrel. All right, trying to sight this guy in and five shots is gonna be a trick. We also have to get a velocity with the lab radar here. So if you haven't bore sighted before, you really need to have the skill. Yes, I'm on paper. So we're two inches left, two inches low. I would normally do four clicks for one inch, but since we're at 50 yards and not 100, I've got to double that. This Zero Tech scope has a very fine reticle. All right, we're close enough that I'm gonna push this back to 100 yards now. The really tough part about this is I have no idea if this gun's even grouping well, <laughs> but I will say that the shots seem to be going where I would expect them to go so far. Okay, here we go with shot three. I'm gonna risk shot four on just shooting in that same spot and see if we land there. And then I'll just make the adjustment accordingly. That's only gonna give us one shot to try to make that 500 yarder. Did we get a velocity? Of course not, because it's a lab radar. All right, here we go. Did not adjust the scope. So hopefully we'll shoot in that same spot, put a third hole right next to those two. All right, sweet. So we're grouping, we're doing well. We got a velocity, 2880 on that one. So now I'm just gonna adjust two to the right and two down. And now this will be our fifth shot ever on this brand new gun. We're gonna back it up now to 500 yards and see, I mean, everything should be dialed at this point. We should be able to make that shot. Let's try it. Holy crap, that's far. <laughs> I can barely see the target naked eye. What have I gotten myself into trying to do this on camera? Fifth shot ever with this gun. All right, I typed everything into the Hornady uh, ballistics app. It's given me eight MOA of elevation, which I've dialed in. The wind is really gusty here. One MOA into the wind. 
Well, I went off target. I don't know if that was a hit. You guys can already see it. I have no idea. I'm gonna give it one more and zoom out a little bit so I can see. I lost my picture. Uh-oh. Is this not a first focal plane optic? Oh no. Ah! This is a second focal plane optic. I thought for sure this was a first focal plane. I just saw a little mark here by the nine on the zoom. And that means your reticle isn't correct unless you're at that zoom. And I just didn't think about it. Dang it, watch my video on first versus second focal plane optics and you'll just see why that sucks. I probably missed. Dang it, all right, I'm gonna take a second shot. Ah, did not realize it was second focal plane. I even remarked, I said, oh, the reticle's really fine. I was surprised when I zoomed in because usually they get pretty fat when you're zoomed in. All right, let's try this again. Well, it's my mistake. It's not the scope's fault. It's my, me for not noticing it. Well, there's dust all around there. Looks like one shot, presumably the second, where I was at the correct magnification for a second focal plane optic, did hit, oh, probably six inches off center. And the other shot appears to have hit the gravel and just hit some shrapnel up there. So once I had it, so I guess, dang it, so I guess I didn't get five shots to, a, to 500 yards, but it was six, I'll take it, pretty cool. Now I'm gonna do just some, some accuracy testing. It takes me a couple hours because I got a shoot a group, wait for it to cool, shoot a group, wait for it to cool, try different types of ammo. So we'll jump back to the office and I'll show you the results. So here's the verdict on the Mauser M18. I did a ton of accuracy testing. My shoulders are gonna be sore for a couple days because the recoil pad on this thing is, I mean, it's, I would say it's a little bit more dense than concrete, but not quite to the diamond. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. This thing is not gonna soak up any impact on it. It's like they took their cues from the, what is it? The, the Mosin Nagant that has the steel butt pad so you can, but the accuracy was good. I would consider it, you know, one MOA when you get a load that it likes. 1.3 inches was kind of normal with Hornady Super Performance. 1.05 with Federal Power Shock was best group. And then Precision Hunter, 1.2 inches. Overall, I mean, this is a one MOA gun. Find ammo that it likes and it's very reliable. That is one thing that I do like is sometimes I'll see a gun that sometimes gets a good group and then they do just wild things. This one was very consistent. Like every group was just right around, just barely over an inch. It promises a sub MOA Prazione Granatia. And it does that. It does have the Prazione Granatia. Um, plus, it has the soft grip Einlagen, which is nice to have. That's usually not a feature that we see in this level of a gun. The feeding of this gun is good. From the magazine, you're not going to have any issues as long as you're running that bolt hard. You don't want to go soft on really any bolt, but especially this one, you got to run it hard and it does just fine. The issues I had are, it does have dual feed ramps in here. And so when you're single feeding, you know, you have nothing in the magazine, you just chuck a shell in and try to close it off. It often gets stuck unless that shell starts very far back in there. So it's not great at single feeding, but very reliable from the magazine. The trigger is good quality, but it's quite heavy, three pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. I think it is an adjustable trigger. Yes, it is an adjustable trigger. I haven't adjusted mine, but that's nice to know. And I love that it has a threaded muzzle, but I mean, let's be serious. The best feature, really the reason you get this gun is cause look, you're out, you're hot, hungry, tired, you grab your smoky nuts, you get your chocolate eyeball from your kids, Easter candy, and you're ready to go. What other gun offers that? So where does this fit in? 
There's a lot of competition in this space, obviously, in that very inexpensive gun space. And that's the question that I kept asking me as I was shooting this. This is not a bad gun. In fact, it's quite a good gun for the price point. But is it worth it over the Ruger American? What about the Bagara B14? What about the CVA Cascade, etc.? I got you covered because we're going to go to the best gun under $600, $700, $800 in upcoming videos. We're going to be doing a few individual reviews kind of all leading up to that in just a couple weeks. And there we will see how this thing stacks up. Thanks everybody for joining me in this video and thank you to Mauser for holding my snacks.